Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program. I got a really long email, really, 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 really long email from a fan. This is David. Hey AC3, I thought I'd read it. I recently became a watch enthusiast, to put it mildly, and in the course of my manic review of horological websites in search of knowledge, I naturally discovered Archie Luxury and its irreverent and bombastic host to my great glee and delight. I originally thought, perhaps naively, that AC3 was a real Brit of aristocratic origin that had fallen from grace, perhaps disinherited and a little down on his luck, but nonetheless in possession in but nonetheless in possession genuine knowledge of the finer things in life and in particular the estoerotic surroundings both vintage and modern time pieces of her horolog historical repute i've only watched about 20 or so of ac3's vignettes watch reviews or shows so perhaps i still haven't captured the true essence of archie but from my first exposure i was literally crying with laughter over what appeared to be such an Icon that classic and foul-mouthed affront to the normally erudite, factually laden, glib and and or uncutuous and sober presentations of watch information by the likes of blah 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 or blah 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 in an industry draped in history, tradition, upper crusties and nobility. My amusement was further buoyed by the negative comments and rallying attacks in various watch forums questioning AC3 sanity, sobriety and personal challenges, marriage, employment, etc. In short, I found AC3 to be hilariously refreshing alternative as a bad boy blue blood. Or errant aristocrat who's boldly and unabashedly expressed himself with impunity and told it like it is without regard to the consequences, social conformity or political or horological correctness. That is someone who with the rare quality of being secure enough in their own skin to be a free reeling spirit, not afraid to speak their mind without fear of appraisals. Unfortunately, the same behavior is also engaged in by, jack by a jackass who is unaware of any social consequences and at times it's difficult to distinguish the two. These anecdotes, anecdotes for AC3 might be a little excessive, but they do set the stage, so to speak, for the grave disappointment I experienced when I subsequently learned that the blue in the Beast of Brisbane more aptly applied to his collar, not his blood, and that my anti-hero was nothing more than a self-proclaimed method actor known as Paul Pluter. You could change that name to Platter for a little silver lining, who was grinding and winding it out with the mass of humanity. Notwithstanding this disappointment, Paul Pluter, AC3, is still quite a likable fucker. For whom I feel a certain affinity, not unlike the affection continues to harbour for his Fido even after discovering the mangy mutt neck deep in a mess of feathers of a favourite pillow torn to shred, and want the arch and want the archy luxury to succeed, least PP be forced to devote his Stan Iskilovsky talents elsewhere in mundane world of real employment. As far as the show goes, I have the following comments and suggestions. Number one, don't kill off Archie. I recently saw a video herein you read a letter from one of your viewers discussing the possibility, possible suicide or demise of Archie. I don't know how the genius of that idea, but it is a very bad one. The persona of bad boy AC3 is what gives the show its soul, its wit and notoriety. Without the amusing and controversial antics of AC3, I doubt anyone would watch the show for its content or even discussing it various watch forums. Adhere to the old golf adage of sticking it, sticking with what has got AC3 to the front of the pack and don't start changing your swing or game plan as you approach victory. Ah! 
talk, bitch. Number two, provide more factual comment content. From the perspective and initiative in the vast world of watches, there is just an overwhelming amount of information data to try and absorb and understand from the history and law of Holy Trinity, the hierarchy of watch manufacturers and the quality of product products resale value, the intricacy, intricacy, in, intricacy mechanical movements and the endless dilemma and indecision of trying to select just the right watch from a sea of choices. Serious watch enthusiasts, the only fuckers that would find and watch your show in the first place, are looking for guidance and insight and validation of would-be purchases. From my standpoint, AC3 tends to rail and pontificate profanely without providing much of a way factual basis for his opinion, which may be absolutely be on solid ground, but the uninformed viewer really has no way of knowing. For example, I saw a recent show in which some fucker was asking your opinion about selling a vintage Audemars Piguet inherited from his father and buying a Nomos for 20000 which even a novice like me would recognize as a foolhardly and misguided mistake. Even though AC3 undoubtedly gave him the right advice, it could have included some basic facts as to why the Audemars is so revered, holy trinity, technical contributions to horology, long-term value, etc., and some background on Nomus, origin, history, ranking in the watch community. Nomus must be doing something right to be charging 20000 for a watch. But the show didn't provide any insight as to why Nomus, the Nomus watch was even under consideration. Charge more. Number three, charge more for your opinions. This point is closely related to the comments on content. To someone who charges over $350 an hour, your fee of $20 for a watch review seems ridiculously low. For a learned opinion from someone with AC3's purported knowledge, if you're an expert called on to testify in a legal case, your fee would range from 1000 to 2000 a day. Maybe you should look into that as a profitable side when someone sues a dealer for phony dealing. Your bargain basement fee brings to mind the old adage, getting what you are paying for, and perhaps that's correct. An off-the-cuff, profanity-laden opinion with no real substance. I'm suggesting that if you just spend a little bit more time, actual cons compensatable type of research to supplement your opinion with, in fact, you could be charging more in the range of $35 to $50 per review. Maybe even offer a short written evaluation appraisal for $50 to $100, but that would require actual work on the part of AC3. I don't mean to imply that you're not dedicated to the channel, but not all work is fun and glamorous, and I'm sure you also appreciate they don't call it work for nothing. Also, don't forget that the fuckers in the luxury watch market are not penurious paupers, even though they may, they may negotiate to the last dime as a matter of business practice. Most would willingly pay a reasonable fee for valuable advice before spending that type of money on a wristwatch that could alternatively purchase an expensive car or in some cases a house. In short, AC3 needs to step up his game for step up his game for more gain. Number four, moderate the profanity. While I realize the rampant use of profanity is part of the shtick and or shock and or appeal of AC3. It's just becoming a little a little too repetitive and braying without proving any real colour or emphasis. And instead appears to be filler pause while AC tries to think of something more substantive to say. And now for my real request, a comparison and valuation of a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust and a Bormann Mercer Avant-Garde or Monte Carlo. Both purchased in Zurich at the same time for the same price, 1200 bucks. Not a small sum at the time. A story I have dubbed from the fraternal battling and emanating from the origins of Rome. Rolex and Remulus, or simply older brother knows best. 
The background story is that in 1984, on a trip to Switzerland, my older brother asked me to buy him a Rolex, of course, to save money on duty, which I faithfully did at a local jewelry store, and at the same time, decided to purchase a watch for myself of equal rival, of equal value. Sibling rivalry has its cost. Without doing any research, or really understanding the history and law of watch brands or the difference between mechanical and quartz pieces, I essentially eschewed the Rolex as being a big name and overpriced brand that appealed to the masses, and as a brass yank, kick-ass and maverick attorney decided to seek out what I would ultimately prove to be a better value for the same money. The fact that the model was an avant-garde may have entered into my decision making but I really don't want to admit something as superficial, as image-driven as that. It's been a long time since that event, but I think I simply walked around the store with a salesman in tow as he advised, uh, as he tried advice as the various brands and prospects that were pleasing to my eye and ultimately settled on the glitter of diamonds and gold of the brilliant Baum with a sleek and thin case. I believe thin was the rage at the time because I believe they embed the watch with intrinsic value that would withstand the test of time. In retrospect, I realize, and not entirely undue to the wisdom of your channel, that I was somewhat like Barracuda striking at a slimy lure and made m many cardinal mistakes in buy watch buying, i.e. quartz versus mechanical, two-tone bracelet and case with jewelry components, diamonds and lower brand recognition, le leading credence to the old saying that all that glitters is not gold. Fast forward 33 years to today, I can predict the outcome of your valuation as the Rolex has either retained or increased in value while the Baum has declined. Nevertheless, I would appreciate a face-to-face -face comparison of the swashbucking and dynamite head of the corporate sales department to the boring and state accountant. I believe that was one of the comparisons you made or close enough with Patek being El Pre Presidente. How many pages does this guy write me? I would appreciate if you could touch on the following points, the historical roots of both companies. After all, Baum, I believe, is the seventh oldest Swiss watch manufacturer. Their respective contributions to horology and watchmaking, their current status or ranking in the world Watch world, the current value for both watches, and finally a little tongue in cheek. Mention my name as a prominent real estate attorney, attorney in Long Beach with a side specialty in consumer fraud related to the sale purchase of bogus high end watches. Huh. Most of this information is not already in the oversized head of AC3, is readily available on numerous websites, and would require a little more than intellectual intensity i'm thinking 20 to 30 minutes per piece also i've spent a great deal of time trying to duplicate find a duplicate of my bomb online to all to no avail and i'm not sure whether it is in fact an avant-garde or a monte carlo perhaps ac3 has other sources or direct contacts at bomb that could clarify the exact model identification of course i'm holding out small hope that the boring bomb may yet still outdo the Rebid Rolex as being a very rare and limited edition with diamond indices and that Baum would offer a small fortune to reacquire it as a museum piece. Finally, and I know this has been a long email that is probably taxing AC3's consultation, but as Remulus, I would expect the Baum to receive nothing less than a full brunt of one of a AC3's uh, raw, ravage and railing reviews, not, not that I'm a massachist, but it's in entertainment and to prove AC3's integrity can't be bought for a mere pence. For some facts in support, if AC3 needs any further information, let me know. And finally, I apologize for the fowry pros to an occupational haphazard, and I can't help it. Dave, thank you. Dave, so... Wowzers, we've got a, uh, a really long email there. What do you fuckers think? 
very interesting points there. He's, uh, don't kill off Archie, I think is very good idea. No, let's just quickly show, summarize. No, I don't think we should kill him off. He's, um, he's a great character and uh, he's, he's a great, great guy out there. Provide more factual content? Yep, I'll look into that. I like to provide the entertainment so that people don't even realize they're learning facts along the way. Charge more for your opinions. Look, I do get a lot of people who give me good tips, so I I like to make it accessible for the all people who can um, who can pay. Uh, obviously, you pay a bit more. I'll give you a bit more time. I read your letter, for example. That was a fucking long thing. Moderate the profanity. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know about that. But look, some really great tips for the Archie, and it's it's really great to see a person of your caliber, Dave has sent me a 10 page email. Thank you so much. I'm Archie Luxury, tell me what you fuckers think of that. Fuck that was long. Great guy, but great guy. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we're doing the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money.